Okay, so here we've got measures of central tendency, which essentially means working out those averages, standard deviations, and so on. So generally, we work out a mean and standard deviation together, and the mean represents your average, so your common point, and your standard deviation represents your variation, so how far something is away from the mean. Now, what you have to remember is the mean can move. You can add, you can subtract, you can multiply, you can divide. But how far everything is from the mean is only going to be affected, so the standard deviation and variance is only affected by multiplying and dividing, whereas the mean is affected by everything. This will make sense in a second. So let's have a look at this question. We're given some information, we're told it's been coded, and we want to find out an estimate for the mean and the standard deviation. Now, in your formula books, you're given your formulas, but you should know that at least the mean is going to be your sum of everything, which is what this represents, divided by the total amount, which is 200. So we're going to do minus 467 divided by 200 to give us minus 3, minus 2 even, 0.335. And then our standard deviation, we're told, is the sum of Fy squared divided by n minus our mean squared. So 2.335, and it's negative, so if you square it, it's going to become positive. And that gives us our variance. To get our standard deviation, we've got to take the square root of that. And we're left with 6.36. Okay. However, this is an estimate for these um, coded vari variables, not for the actual mean. Which makes sense because you wouldn't expect the lifetime to be negative. So the mean is easy. I said mean is affected by everything. In order to get to the y, what did they do? So they took a value, minus 755, then divided by 2.5. So you're going to do the opposite. You're going to take your y bar, you're going to multiply it by 2.5, and then you're going to add 755. And we get 749 point something, one something, but 749 is a sensible way to put that. So we'll put it for three significant figures. For the standard deviation, however, it's only affected by multiplying or dividing by anything. So we don't do this minus bit here, or as we did add it back, we're actually just going to take the 2.5. So your standard deviation of x is going to be your 6.36 multiplied by your 2.5, you 15.9. Okay, so for part b, what would they recommend they use? Now, if you look at your interquartile range, it's significantly, well, it's higher than your standard deviation. So, and there isn't any evidence here that you've got extreme values. So that's when your interquartile range is, and your median is a bit more interesting, is if you've got extreme values, your mean will be affected by that, whereas your median won't. So what you'd say here is, I would recommend, um, I would recommend using the standard deviation. And the reason that is, it's um, standard deviation and this is because it's lower, it's a lower value showing less variation. And, you know, you could also write no evidence of extreme values. Right, I hope that's useful. We'll look at the next question.